when uh, uh, last year when Donald Trump decided to take the United States of America out of the Paris Climate Accords, um, very soon after that, almost immediately, some of the global cities in the U.S., um, of which uh, New York is an example, decided to go ahead with the Paris Climate Accord anyhow. And so they decided that they will continue uh, their efforts to reduce their emissions based on the Paris Accord uh, targets. Uh, that, that is an example, we think, of a renaissance of the city uh, that we haven't seen in, in, in the past 50 to 100 years as uh, over the last decades, the state, the, co the country government, the state has provided more and more services to their citizens, uh, the power and the influence of the city was getting smaller and smaller. Uh, but now we are in emerging in a, in, a, in a new trend, we believe, where uh, the city has, again, is regaining power over uh, and influence among its uh, citizens to the expense of, expense of the, the, the trend. Therefore, the Renaissance uh, dear, I'm Sebastian Aubrey and I look after our strategic engagements and key accounts uh, for DASO systems in, in China. So today we want to uh, look at how we, you know, the, the, the trends that we observe in the, in the, in the, in the cities as well as, as, well as, as well as the challenges and how we think we can help to address those challenges. In terms of trends, we see uh, three major strengths. Uh, the first one is obviously sustainability, and uh, together with this, uh, the need for uh, multi-scale uh, 3D models, you know, city models uh, to manage the city better. The second one would be uh, the city as a connectivity booster, and finally, uh, how digital technology is impacting uh, the life of uh, city urban citizens. In terms of uh, sustainability, we've talked before this, we had many good examples of uh, how critical, you know, climate change, for example, is the mother of all, of all uh, uh, risks and threats to our livelihood. Um, and uh, there are other, uh, there are many, many other constraints uh, facing, facing us, for example, um, recycling of waste. Uh, in China, as an example, 30% of the, the waste in the city is through is from the construction industry. So it's either like building a, a new building or, or destroying an old one and replacing it with a new one. Uh, these force cities to uh, look at how they will uh, 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 recycle and reuse um, uh, natural resources and, uh, and other resources. The multi-scale uh, uh, management imperative is because uh, a city has to be able to zoom in and zoom out in the city. It has to go to maybe a block, a building, or a neighborhood, and then to a district or a campus, and finally to the entire city uh, and, and even its, uh, its uh, surroundings. So that's the first, uh, the first trend. The second trend is obviously cities for thousands of years have been a uh, connectivity factor. This is where people come together, they can learn from each other, new ideas come up in cities. However, um, we believe that, uh, thanks to technology, uh, there's new uh, and, uh, enforced uh, communities being created in the city, and the city has to cope with this. The city government has to embrace this uh, new uh, social, social uh, uh, networks being built in, into the city. So on top of having to care about the well-being of its citizens, uh, cities have to embrace uh, the platform economy, for example. They have to embrace uh, social networks and, and facilitate new ways to socialize. The last one uh, is obviously technology, uh, information technology, IoT, we call it I, uh, Internet of Universe, that does a system, um, uh, Internet of Experience. Uh, uh, cloud computing and mobile computing enable citizens to, uh, to be much more connected than they were before. So that, that those trends are, are, are great, but they provide uh, also challenges, new challenges to city mayors. Uh, the, uh, we can see, but we can we can see about four of them here. Obviously, the resources uh, to optimize resources is is, is critical. Um, uh, we have to look at uh, climate uh, change again and, and its impact on uh, um, on how uh, this 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 will uh, this will you know require cities to, to manage resources better. For example, I'll talk later about um, um, flooding and how cities have to cope with flooding much more than uh, before. Uh, as the cities invest massively into infrastructure, they have to find ways to make it cheaper and to make it more sustainable. So they have to look at new business models, for example, public and private partnerships, uh, or uh, again, 
uh, the sharing economy. They have to encourage people to share and reuse assets instead of everyone is buying a, a bicycle, for example. We're going to see uh, cities encouraging people to share a bicycle. Uh, China, is a, China has been a, a, a leader of that uh, globally. Um, holistic orchestration is absolutely critical. When cities face such huge challenges as um, uh, pollution or, or, or massive expansions uh, of their population, everyone in the city government has to work together to the same goal. And that means the city cannot afford to have silos in the city government. Right? So each agency has to work together towards the same goal and, that, that, and people have to work together. So they, they have to share data, they have to work on the same, um, uh, they have to unify their processes, they have to uh, uh, you know, break the silos between, between each other so they can work together to that complexity goal. And uh, one, of the, one of the new ideas uh, for better planning and better management of cities, systems thinking. So we were talking earlier about connected cars, thanks to 5G. Uh, Mr. Kim gave us a few examples. Well, a car itself is a system, right? It's, it's hardware, and then you've got uh, so it's wheels and mechanical parts and doors, etc. And then you have uh, electronics, and then you have software. And this combined, combines together is a system. But that system itself will be connected to other systems in the city, to the infrastructure of the city, such as uh, smart uh, lights, public lights, or, or 5G, uh, 5G uh, uh, towers, etc. To, 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 or connected parking lots so that it knows where, where to park. So the view here is really, uh, is really a challenge because you have to manage the systems within the system. Uh, increasing development, the, the, the massive rise of, of population. In Asia, for example, in the next 30 years, so by 2050, it's expected that uh, uh, urban population will double. So that will be going, to, going, through, uh, going to, through China's continuous urbanization, uh, but also India's urbanization, also Southeast Asia urbanization, for example. So uh, this um, provides a, a huge, uh, huge stress to cities. On the other hand, you may have countries like Japan and Italy, which are old countries, and where cities actually uh, collapse. So you have small cities where, where people just, just leave and, and they are being uh, left alone, you know, abandoned uh, cities, they become ghost cities. So, so this is also a very uh, uh, stressful um, uh, force to the society. The, the city government has to be able to connect better with its people to address this anxiety from uh, uh, people's, uh, you know, in, in the society. And finally, obviously, a city has to be very careful about uh, the trust of its citizens towards how it handles private data. Um, if, 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 uh, if, if the system is to work, people have to be willing to share the data. Usually people are very willing to share data in exchange of services. We've seen this with, with many, many platforms on the internet, etc. However, uh, 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 cities have to be managed and a, there has to be a strong governance for that. What we want to do at Dassault System is to leverage our 38 years of experience um, in bringing virtual, the virtual world to the real world and make the real world better. Uh, we started this in, in the very early 80s. Uh, uh, we we come, originally come from the Dassault Aviation uh, the, the Aerospace Company. We were spin out of, of this uh, company in 81, so a long time ago. Uh, and we've done, we've done a, a few breakthroughs uh, to, for the last uh, several decades. The, the, one of the key, key breakthroughs we did was working with Boeing in the, na in the late 80s, in, in, in 89, where we, allowed, we enabled Boeing to build a new <coughs> model of aircraft without any single physical prototype. All digital, so we called it digital mock-up. Uh, this was very uh, innovative, very risky, or very, well, not very risky, but you know, people felt uh, not very comfortable with this. But it became an uh, absolute success, commercial success. That's a 777. So the 777 was built uh, uh, you know, without any prototype, prototype, and using our technology, they were able to do a digital mock up. That was the engineering uh, world. What we did later on was to broaden this to the manufacturing world. and. and uh, uh, the automotive industry, the car, the car makers, were probably among the, the first ones to link their R&D 3D models uh, into uh, the digital factory. So way before we were talking about uh, Industry 4.0, uh, 
uh, there was an effort in the late 90s already to, uh, to combine uh, digital uh, you know, models and digital data for uh, R&D and for manufacturing. What we've done in the last five years is try to bring this uh, same idea, so you, 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 you make a digital world and you, combine, you, you try to uh, improve the way uh, the real world is happening for smart cities, uh, for cities. And so uh, uh, I'll give a couple of examples of that where cities are able to improve their citizens' lives um, through uh, digital, the, the virtual world. Uh, actually, a good example of that is the city of Singapore. So what you see here is a, is a digitalized twin of the city. Every single object has been digitalized uh, by the city government. This is a, 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 an initiative by the, the Prime Minister's office, so the top level of the government, bringing all the agencies together, the land authority, the, the housing development board, etc. And uh, where the idea is to, uh, is to digitalize and then to visualize and finally to make uh, simulations, right, to, uh, to make so. So here we, we could look at uh, how um, um, a neighborhood uh, uh, inhabitant can walk from the train station to its apartment in the shortest, uh, in the most uh, enjoyable way possible. We can try to make simulations of that. Then we can zoom in onto one uh, block of uh, uh, HDBs, you know, uh, uh, these are public housing, and see how much exposure of sun this side of the building will get um, per day. And that has a big impact on how much energy is consumed, how much air conditioning the people will, will be burning uh, throughout the day. So um, each building is not just a model, it's not just a, a, a picture with a, with a nice, uh, nice looking thing. It, it, it has uh, parametric data. And so that's how you can start to make simulations. For example, the parking lot, we know exactly how many spaces there. We know every tree in Singapore. Singapore, in Singapore, you're not allowed to, to, to cut a tree without replacing it. Every tree has an ID in Singapore, so that, that tells you how, how advanced they are. We can make then simulations. Once we have all this data, we can, for example, here's a gas explosion in the middle of, a, in the middle of a, a public housing, and that will, you will see in a, in a few seconds that how, how useful this can be for, uh, for safety, uh, safety, uh, uh, safety simulations, etc. Here is a parking lot, where it's very quick, but parking lot where you can see how many people park their cars. Here we go back to the to the gas explosion. You see the gas here spreading. Uh, well, it was there, just probably in the hidden in the back. So the gas is coming there, and then it, you know are the corridors well and the doors well designed so people can escape and uh, rush out in the, as fast as possible. Another goal of the city, uh, the government of Singapore, is to reduce by two degrees Celsius the perceived temperature of Singapore. They cannot obviously reduce the, the real temperature, but they can reduce the perceived uh, temperature by uh, simulating, the, how the, simulating how the wind flows through the city better, which makes people feel that it's actually cooler when, it, when it's actually not. But uh, this is how advanced uh, uh, the, the, the planning, uh, you know, kind of planning you can do here. Another example uh, quickly is uh, the Sponge City. This is extremely, uh, extremely, uh, up to date with, with, uh, with global warming and, and uh, for example we all remember in China for those uh, people living in, in China in Wuhan in 2006 16 sorry uh, over 200 million people died in, uh, in floods uh, Wuhan is a lot of a uh, lot of rain every day every year but because everything has been cemented the water just flows you know, it just drains down to, to the same places it drains down to the to the underground water things and the city is not able to absorb it anymore. So what we are trying to do here, what we're doing, for example, with the city of Boston here, is to build, again, build systems. So we are, the city of Boston is, is investing into new materials for sidewalks, for pavements, and, and for the concrete on the roads, which absorbs water. So instead of the water flushing, being flushed to a, to a special uh, you know, canalization or, or a special water treatment place, and then overflow and then blow up, the, the street and the pavements was actually slowly you know, uh, attract, you know, absorb the water just like mud or, or earth would do. And each of these pavement blocks or city uh, or road blocks will have, uh, uh, will have uh, uh, you know, pr properties as, as part of a system. And then again, we come back to the simulation. We're able, we're going to be able to see how much uh, they can absorb given, uh, uh, you know, how, depending on the rainfall. 
in reality, we will have connected device uh, for each pavement to, uh, to know how much water there is. So the real world will come in here with uh, uh, IoT devices. Another great example. So just to conclude, basically we want uh, uh, cities to, to come together uh, as one organization across, uh, across departments, across teams, and also across outside, uh, outside uh, players and contributors to holistically uh, manage their sustainable development. And we believe that uh, a 3D platform is probably the best way to, to achieve this. Thank you very much.